T today is the disappearance day of two great Vaishnavas in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mahesh Pandit and Udaranda Thakur. So we will sing the song for the disappearance of the Vaishnavas. It's on page, page 61 in this book. Yeah, Yanni will put it down. Yes, 
Sane Kuti Bo Mata Anale Pashi Bo Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we'll go on to read Nectar of Nana Shastra Vichari Nai Kanipano Saddharma Samstapako Oh, 
to the six Goswamis, namely Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatana Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Lachiva Goswami, Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who are all very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus they are honored all over the three worlds, and they are worth taking shelter of, because they are absorbed in the mood of gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha and Krishna. We're reading today, we're going to begin chapter 19, devotional service in pure love of God. Right? Sanat, uh, Rupa Goswami this book, originally known as Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, describes devotional service in three different stages. Sadhana Bhakti, devotional service in practice. Bhava Bhakti, devotional service in practice. And Prabhakti, devotional service in love of God. So we were hearing in the last few days about Bhava Bhakti. Now today we're going to go on to hear about Prema Bhakti, pure love of God. When one desires to love Krishna in one's particular relationship becomes intensified, this is known as pure love of Godhead. In the beginning, a devotee is engaged in the regulative principles of devotional service by the order of his spiritual master. When one thereby becomes completely purified of all material contamination, there develop an, atmos an, there develop an attachment and taste for devotional service. This taste and attachment when gradually intensified in the course of time, becomes love. The word love can be actually applied only in relationship with the personality of Godhead. In the material world, love is not applicable at all. What goes on under the name of love in the material world is nothing but lust. There is a gulf of difference between love and lust, but like the difference between gold and iron. In the Narada Pancharatra, it is clearly stated that when lust is completely transferred to the Supreme Godhead, 
And the concept of kinship is completely exposed, is completely reposed in Him. Such is accepted as pure love of God by great authorities like Bhishma, Prahlad, Uddhav and Narad. We'll read that again. In the Narad Pancharatra it is clearly stated that lust is completely transferred to the Supreme Pers to the Supreme Godhead and the concept of kinship is completely reposed in Him. Such is accepted as pure love of Godhead. Great authorities like Bhishma have explained that love of Godhead means completely giving up all so-called love for any other person. According to Bhishma, love means reposing one's affection completely upon one person, withdrawing all affinities for any other person. This pure love can be transferred to the Supreme Personality of Godhead under two conditions, out of ecstasy and out of causeless mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. So we'll go on to hear more about that tomorrow. Now we're going to read Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhiraya Tato Jaya Mudhiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Kyanto 3, text num chapter number 23, Devahuti's Lamentation, text number 22. Huh? Yeah. Which one's on the board? 22. 22. Graham tat pasyantim. Nati prite na chetasa. Sarva bhuta shaya bhikna. Ravokchat kardamaswayam Idrik graham tat pasyantim Nati prite na chetasa Sarva bhuta shaya bhikna Ravokchat kardamaswayam Ravokchat kardamaswayam Idrigriham tat pasyantim Idrigriham tat pasyantim Nati prite na chetasa Nati prite na chetasa Sarva bhuta saya bhikna Ravokchat kardamaswayam Ravokchat kardamaswayam 
A drake, such Graham house, but that Pashyantim looking at Naati Pritena, not much pleased, Chetasa with a heart, Sarva Bhuta of everyone. Ashaya Abhigna, understanding the heart, Pravochat, he addressed Kardama, Kardama, Swayam, personally. When he sees Bahuti looking at the gigantic opulent palace with a display heart. Kardama Muni understand her feelings because he could study the heart of anyone. Thus he personally addressed his wife as follows. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Devahuti had spent a long time in the hermitage not taking much care of her body. She was covered with dirt and her clothing was not very nice. Kardama Muni was surprised that he could produce such a palace. And similarly, his wife Devahuti was also astonished. How could she live in that opulent palace? Kardama Muni could understand her astonishment, and thus he spoke as follows. Umma jnana timarandasya jnana chalakaya jaksur militanjena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobistam stapitam yena bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Savrakadatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha 
He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhina Bandhu Jagatpate Opesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Korangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishapano Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchaka Pata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Hatvaita Kadadhar Sri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, hearing about the appearance, or the, rather the the married life of Kardama Muni. Their married life, right? Devahuti was the daughter of Swayambhuvamanu. Swayambhuvamanu was emperor. He had a big palace. But it was arranged that his daughter, Devahuti, would marry this Kardama Muni. And Kardama Muni was a hermit. <laughs> you know, hermits, they live in the forest, you know. You find even today you get some hermits, they live in the forest. You go to Russia, a lot of people live in the forest there. You get land, you give it, the government, they give land to people. They want some house, they want to build their house, they give them a place in the forest. So they can go there, build their house, and make a, have some land, they can grow some vegetables. Like, and so, Kardama Muni, he was alone, he was, for, for several thousands of years, he was, because Satya Yuga, we have to understand, it wasn't, you know, it seems like a long past when we speak about thousands of years. But in terms of Satya Yuga, it's not so long, because Satya Yuga people, they live like a hundred thousand years. So to perform austerities for 10,000 years or 20, 30,000 years, not so big a thing, you know, right? because they live a very long life in Satya Yuga. So Kardama Muni had been living there, doing brahmacharya, practicing astanga yoga, meditating on the Lord in the heart, controlling the mind and senses. And it was arranged by Mbhuva Manu brought his daughter. He had three daughters. There was Akuti, Prachuti and Devahuti. So Devahuti was brought to marry this Kardama Muni. It was arranged. Narada Muni had told Devahuti about Kardama. And she became attracted that, oh, I want to marry him. You know, so Swayambhuva Manu brought the daughter along to marry, to be with Kardama Muni. And Kardama Muni didn't have much of a residence to offer his wife. The girl was coming from the palace, but she came to live in the hermitage. What, what do you have in, in, when you live in the forest? You build the hermit, you build your hermitage out of some wood, it's the wood that you find here and there. And so he was living very simply. Uh, of course, there was no facilities which you, would, which you would find in the palace. But Devahuti accepted that this is my husband, I should live with him. So we see from the Srimad Bhagavatam, we see the culture how the culture was, that the woman would follow the culture, that follow the man. 
Just like when Gandhari was told that she was to be married to Dhritarashtra and that Dhritarashtra was blind, then Gandhari also covered her eyes. She didn't want to be better than her husband. At similar when Pandu left the body, Pandu had two wives, Madri and Kunti. Madri performed sati. She entered into the fire of her husband's body. When they were cremating Pandu's body, Madri entered into the fire and gave up her life to go with her husband. So women had so much chastity, so much uh, faith to follow their husband. So here we see Devahuti following Kardama Muni. She's been living with her husband for some time there in the forest. And she had come from the palace where she was eating very royal food and living in all comfort and luxury. And now she was living in the forest. But she accepted, this is my husband, I should live with, I should accept whatever standards he accepts. So Kardama Muni, because we said he'd been doing brahmacharya, and so now he'd become a householder, but didn't make a big change to him. He was still living in the hermitage, in the ashram, in his ashram there in the forest. And Devahuti said, I, you, I'm not going to live here, you have to get a house, we have to have a car, we need this, we need that. You know, she didn't make any demands to her husband. She accepted her husband's conditions. And she just went along and served her husband, did what she could do to serve him in that situation. And so, they went on like that for some time. So naturally she's living in the forest and just the two of them, no other ladies for company. So she became thin, living in the forest. You don't eat luxury food. You just eat what grows in the forest. You find some wild fruits and wild leaves, some different roots and things, you know, it's surprising what we can eat when you have to, you, one, one, I met one person, they'd been living in the mountains in one part of China, and I asked, did you eat? They said, oh, sometimes find some wild potatoes. <laughs> dig up some wild potatoes and this kind of thing, some herbs here and there. So, in the same way Kardama Muni and Devahuti were living in the forest, just as Lord Ramachandra also went into exile with his wife and with Lakshman, three of them, they lived in the forest. We don't hear of them dying of hunger, Somehow they would manage to find things to eat, collect herbs and fruits and different things, and they would live on them. So Kardama Muni, Devahuti, they were doing charities there. But at a certain point Devahuti had the desire to have a child. That's natural. Women like to have a child, generally. Most women, not all women, but generally women like to have a child. So she requested her husband to please make some arrangement so that we can have a child. So Kardama Muni, he, he, when the wife approaches the husband like that, it's the duty of the husband to satisfy the desire of the wife. So Kadama Muni, he has to make some arrangements in order to have the child. And 
in order to he has to arrange suitable residences. So we heard in the previous verses about the almost an estate which he created. Not just a house, but there were gardens and, <laughs> and there were swans and pigeons. Some were real and some were uh, just, just uh, imitation. I was telling yesterday at, B at uh, Dvija Goranga's place over in uh, BM, they've got peacocks on the side of the altar. At the side of, very nice, very well done. The artist is quite good. Uh, so like that in the palace of Kar this house which was created by Kardama Muni, was all, it, and it, it, there were birds, and some birds were real and some were not, but there was so much opulence, there was, the, it was all coral, and uh, there was wonderful jewels, and diamonds, and sapphires, and onyx, and all kinds of stones, and gems were used to decorate the place. There was no need of lighting. Just like in Krishna's palace in Dwarka, when Krishna, had, of course, he didn't have one palace, he had 16,108 palaces, one palace for each queen. So where did, how did they like the palaces in these days? There were no power stations, there was no question of power stations. How did they like the palace? They had gems, they had different precious stones. And the light from the stones would reflect and create lighting in the houses. And we heard in an earlier purport how in Delhi, when the Mughals were there, the Mughals built big palaces, and these palaces were also lit by precious stones. And Prabhupada said, the stones have all been taken by the government today. But initially, there were many it was all lit by stones. Just like you go to uh, Allahabad as well, you see the big fort there, again from the Mughals, and of course in Delhi, the Red Fort, these kind of places. There's many of them around India. So these palaces, great buildings, there was no question of lighting, and they didn't use oil lamps. You know, nowadays we, we think we're being austere, use oil lamps, right? But in the older day, before that, they were having gems, precious stones. But nobody was stealing the stones. Although there were so many valuable jewels and gems to light the palace, there was no danger of people coming and stealing them. Because these kind of things, these stones and gems were available easily. Anybody who wanted them, they could find them. But people were not anxious for these things. They were not greedy. Satya Yuga, people were all Paramahamsas. So they were not anxious to get more wealth and I've got this, this is mine. There was not that kind of mentality among the people in the Satya Yuga. In the Satya Yuga, all the religious principles were intact. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness. You, we see in Kali Yuga, such a different time, everybody's trying to be better than the other, and we're all trying to have more than the other. But in the Satya Yuga, people were content, they were happy, they just wanted the basic necessities of life. Kardama Muni could live in the forest, and his wife came there, and she lived with him, and they were happy. The wife didn't complain, oh, I can't live like... But she did request the child. And when the request came, then Kardama Muni 
arranged for the child. He arranged to have, first of all, the nice residence. Because in order to have the good child, there must be the nice atmosphere. So he arranged this wonderful aerial mansion, mansion which could travel in space and go to higher planets even. So very wonderful. And uh, we were reading yesterday how when Kadama Muni created the place, it was so amazing that even he was, sur he was surprised. He had created it by his yoga powers, but he was, he was amazed himself at the whole place. And here today, we hear Devahuti, she, she just feels, oh, when she sees the palace, she thinks that, well, how can I ever go in there? Because she's very, she's in, in her, you know, she's been living in the forest, so she's in her ragged clothing. She's been living in the forest, so she doesn't have nice silk cloth or anything. But whatever she's wearing, maybe she's dressed in tree bark, I don't know. But we know that when Sita, Ram and Lakshman went into the forest, they dressed themselves in the bark of trees. And their hair, of course, is matted. They take the sap from the tree and they put it on the hair. And nowadays, the, some young hippies, they like to have matted hair, you know. <laughs> yeah, they like to get their hair matted. They feel proud when their hair becomes matted. And so if they want to get matted hair, let them go and live in the forest, you know, and dress in tree bark. Be real yogis, you know, not some fake yogi, matted hair, is living in luxury. <laughs> so, Kardama Muni, Devahuti, Devahuti particularly, she's seeing this mansion which her husband has created, and she's astonished, and she feels, well, well how can I ever go in there? Because she's in her, whatever she's wearing, and it's old, it's dirty, it's not very presentable. And she's also, you know, she's in the forest, her skin has become all wrinkled and dry. It's not been, she hasn't been taking care of her body. Before she was in the palace and she was a queen, the princess, and so she had all kinds of facility to take care of her body. But coming to live with her husband in the forest, she, you know, she lacked all of that. So her body had become emaciated, very weak and thin, not very attractive looking no nice clothing to wear. So it didn't go with the place which Kardama Muni had created. She, she, didn't, she couldn't see how she could fit in. So it's des described here how she feels, uh, she feels, what was it, disgust, displeased. She felt displeased. She didn't feel happy, she didn't feel pleased in her heart. And it is Kardashi, who is her husband, he could understand the feeling of her heart. So that's interesting, that the husband should be able to appreciate the feeling of the wife. The husband's job is to make the wife happy, and to protect the wife and take care of the wife. Women need protection. That's why they get married usually. They think this man will protect me, will look after me. And so Kardama Muni is a perfect husband. Right? The qualification, first of all, the woman has to be chaste and the man should be trained as a brahmachari. 
Oh, so Brahmachari wine is to get married. Oh, it doesn't have to get married, but it can get married. Just like not all men like to be in saffron and have people respect them. Some men just like to be like the other men. They just like to be just like the other people. So Kadama Muni decided also he should accept a wife. And of course, the Lord had personally come and told him that I'm arranging for a suitable girl for you. She's coming in a few days. You have to accept, you should accept her. So Kardama Muni accepted Devahuti and together they lived in the forest. And because she's living with him, so they can, he could understand the, the feeling of his wife's heart. And so he has to make some arrangement to please her. Of course, Krishna is in the heart of everyone. He knows everyone's heart. Kardama, because he is the husband of Devahuti, so he can also understand the desire, the need of the wife. So he sees his wife feels uncomfortable, not pleased when she sees him, the mansion. You, you can understand what saintly characters they must have been, how the wife was, you know, generally a woman when she sees a big mansion and all the luxury, she'll feel very happy. Oh, very nice, oh, very good, I can enjoy here, this is very good, well done. But Devahuti feels, oh, Oh, I don't, I'm not worthy to go into this place. She feels out of place, it doesn't fit me. Oh, I'm, you know, look at me, I'm in my old, I'm in my tree bark. I've got my tree bark clothes on and my hair is all matted and I'm all thin and, you know. This is a mansion, this is meant for a queen, for somebody, you know, they should be very beautiful, should be very healthy, should be very, everything should be very nice. Look at me, I don't fit into this place at all. And Kardama Muni can understand her feelings. So he has to make some arrangement to adjust the situation. See, this is a good husband. You can see how difficult it is to be a husband, right? You have to take care of the wife. You have to understand the mind of the wife. That's not an easy thing to do, right? Who can understand the mind of a woman? <laughs> Very difficult. But somehow, Kadama Muni, because he's a great yogi, he's able to understand the mind, the thinking of Devahuti. And so he will make some arrangement for her, to, so that she can be comfortable in the house, she can be happy. This is ideal family life. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it also describes like that. Ideal family life. Today in Kali Yuga we think family life, oh hell, oh stress, oh anxiety. But it doesn't have to be like that. If people are Krishna conscious, they can live together happily and peacefully. Of course it's not so easy but certainly can be done. And we do have some nice examples of householders. We read about it here in Srimad Bhagavatam. Getting the example, Devahuti and Kardama Muni, ideal householders living together peacefully and the wife accepting the situation 
nice examples. How we read about Sudama Brahman and his wife, and how they were so poor, but Sudama wouldn't go for begging. They did like that. Huh? Advaita Acharya and his wife, Srivastakur and his family. Srivastakur, he was a Brahmana. But how did they live? How did he manage to live? He just depended on Krishna. And Krishna somehow it was arranged. Lord Chaitanya actually blessed Srivast. He said, even the goddess of fortune may go hungry, but in your home there will be no was the blessing of Lord Chaitanya. Because Srivast had so much faith in Lord Nityananda. Lord Chaitanya was testing Srivast. He said, this Nityananda, you don't know his origin. We don't know where he came from. We don't know who he is. Why do you, why do you accept him in your home? Nityananda was staying in the home of Srivast Thakur. He was doing all kinds of unusual things, you know. Lord Nityananda is Abadut. So sometimes he'd take off his clothes and roll around in the mood of ecstasy. And so Lord Chaitanya said to Sri Vasudha, you know, get this man out of here. You don't know who he is. Or we don't know where he's come from. But Sri Thakur told Lord Chaitanya, he said, Oh my Lord, you are testing me, I know. I can never give up the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Even Lord Nityananda may marry a Muslim girl, I will not give up his lotus feet. Even Lord Nityananda may come from the liquor store, I can never give up the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. So when Lord Chaitanya heard like this, and he said to Srivast that, very wonderful, that because you have so much faith in the Lord's feet of Lord Nityananda, there will never be any poverty in your home. You will never have any poverty. Even though Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, may have to go begging, your home will be no problem. So that is, Family life, you see, living together in a consciousness. So Kardama Muni has to make arrangements for Devahuti so that she can be comfortable in this mansion which she has created. Any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Wait for the Muni to get married. Huh? Wait for the Muni to plan to get married. This was a great yogi. When did he get married? When did he plan to get married? When did he plan to get married? When did the Muni plan to get married? Well, the Lord appeared to him. He'd been doing his yoga for thousands of years in the Hermitage, and at a certain point, the Supreme Lord appeared before him and told him that, I know your heart, and I'm making arrangements for a suitable girl to come, and you can accept her. So, that's what happened. After a few more days, Swayambhuva Manu came there with his daughter and left her there with Kardama Muni. So it was the desire, the desire was in the heart of Kardama Muni that he wanted to be in householder life for some time. He wanted to experience householder life. The Lord arranged the suitable girl to come. The Lord personally arranged. And so when she came, he accepted her. Any problem? No. 
a good brahmachari will make a good grihastha. And grihastha doesn't mean you stay grihastha. You move on. Kardama Muni eventually also, after some time, he renounced and he left the home. So that is the Vedic culture, that is Vanashram. Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanapras, Sanyas. So Kardama Muni went through these ashrams. the Vedic system. Sometimes by the order of the spiritual master it is arranged from brahmachari go directly to sannyas. Not that everybody has to become grihasta. But in general most people we see we have only brahmacharis but we have a lot of grihastas. So Kardama Muni showed the example for the grihastas. Ideal family life. Okay, any other question? Okay, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Shri Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Premanan.